Welcome back, everybody, to episode five of the Point Average Podcast. This is NFL Week, uh, Week Five, third podcast of the NFL that we have done. Um, week four just finished up. This is Thursday. The Buccaneers and the Bears are about to start off in about 30 minutes. Um, so we're a little late getting this out, but better late than never. Uh, to start off, I'm doing a quick little recap of last week, um, just so, just in case some of you don't know. Uh, Broncos beat the Jets on Thursday Night Football. Uh, Colts beat the Bears. Bengals beat the Jaguars. Joe Burrow picked up his first win. Uh, Saints were down 14-0 early to the Lions, came back and won that one. Seahawks had a scare but came out on top against the Dolphins. The Browns uh, upset the Cowboys. I think it's safe to say Buccaneers had a shootout with Justin Herbert and the Chargers but came out on top in that one. The Ravens handled Washington. Cardinals were beat by Teddy Bridgewater and the Panthers. The Texans go back to 0-4, beat by the Vikings. Um, Giants and Rams, the Rams won that one close. Uh, Patriots Chiefs, the COVID Bowl, uh, Chiefs won that one. Raiders and Bills, Bills handed the Raiders another L. Uh, 49ers, Eagles, Eagles definitely upset the 49ers on Sunday Night Football. Um, and then the Packers hit good form against the Falcons. So there's your Week 4 recap. We're going to get into Week 5. I'm joined by... Not Aaron Rodgers, uh, by Matthew. How's it going, man? It's doing good, man. Uh, yeah, picture of A Rod. Uh, as you know, we'll probably, actually, we will most definitely be talking about that man. Mama, there goes that man. Uh, yeah, here we go, week five. And uh, it's been fun so far. Uh, a lot of games that, you know, a lot, or a lot of teams that I did not think would be good are looking good, and a lot of teams that I thought would be. Uh, or that look good or looking bad, and then vice versa, you know, bad to good. But uh, got a lot of good topics, uh, a lot of things to uh, discuss, you know. And let me add this. Uh, I said this earlier in the uh, Start 'em Sit 'em podcast. Uh, Gage and I weren't really available for most of the day on Sundays, so we, our uh, visual feedback was not as normal. We weren't on the couch watching Red Zone <clears throat> like we usually do, but. We did get up to date on stats, scores, and you know all things, et cetera. So, yeah, like he said on Sunday, we had a we had a wedding to go to. Our good friend Douglas, who I know, uh, don't know if he'll watch this episode as he's on his honeymoon, um, but he's uh, he's a fan of the show for sure. Uh, appreciate Doug. And uh, yeah, we we went to go to his wedding on Sunday, so uh, we didn't get to see all the action, but we're definitely up to date on everything that went down. Um, but yeah, so. Before we get into a rod, you were able to change your change your picture. The Falcons didn't let you down this past week, I guess, because it was expected that they were going to lose. Uh, that and more so the fact that you know, until I see my my Julio Jones full healthy, I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep my distance. I'm gonna say the Falcons give me COVID. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> right now, I'm keeping my distance. And I'm rolling with with the good guy, Aaron Rodgers. And yeah. the Green Bay Packers. So yeah, can't can't go wrong with a Rod. Um, uh, did you see his his quote on the Pat McAfee show the other day on Aaron Rodgers Tuesday? What he said, um, talking about off years and yeah, yeah. good years. And it's true. Yeah. That's most definitely true. Yeah, if you don't, if you haven't had a chance to watch any of that, I think he's on there for like 30, 45 minutes every Tuesday. Um, this week was the third week he's done it, and it's absolutely hilarious, man. Like. They sometimes they talk about football, but mostly he's on there to not talk about football. He's there to bullshit, and it's it's hilarious. Like him telling a uh, UFO story, incredible. Um, but anyway, we'll get into on the field action with Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay. Uh, they look dangerous right now, man. I I'm gonna go out and say it. I texted you this the other day, but I'm gonna make it public. Uh, Green Bay is the best team in the NFC all around. They are putting up really, really good numbers on offense without their number one wide receiver. Mm-hmm. When he comes Top back, two. yeah, when he comes back, it's it's going to look scary. They have uh, Christian Kirksey is on IR, their starting middle linebacker that they picked up. Um, but you still have Zadarius Smith, who is wrecking havoc on the D-line. Um, they just look good, man. Top to bottom, um, the Packers look really, really dangerous. Yeah, and the, they're they're putting up monster scores. Um, out of the four games they've played, Falcons being the worst team, uh, safe to say that they played. That was their fewest amount of points, and they and he still threw what four three touchdowns. 
last time. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers, 327 yards, six incompletions, four touchdowns. So, you know, we're talking about Zach Wilson, uh, the BYU quarterback, has as many touchdowns as incompletions on the year. Aaron Rodgers almost done it in a game, which is just as impressive. Um, but, yeah, he had, he had four touchdowns. Um, against Falcons, who have a beat-up secondary. They get A.J. back this week, uh, the rookie cornerback that they drafted. I'm not sure who all else comes back. I saw where they could get as many as uh, three, um, including A.J., so they could get two more back, just depending on how the week goes. Don't know the word on Julio. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Tanya had a heck of a game, uh, his breakout game where he Mm -hmm. is, if I'm not mistaken, he has more touchdowns this year than Kelsey, Waller, uh, Hunter Henry, Ingram, and one more. Uh, Maybe it'll come to me. Possibly. Um, I think you can throw Gronk in there, too, because I don't think Gronk scored. I don't even know if he has a catch yet. Um, But anyway, Tanya has more touchdowns than all of those tight ends combined. Um, with a three piece this this past week. So. Yeah, with a hat trick. Um, so what what do you see from Tanya? Why do why do you think he's had such a good breakout season, if you will? Um. Well, you know this this could be lack of no Devonte Adams and you know Lazard going down last week. But uh, if you look over the last few years, Aaron Rodgers has utilized the tight end position pretty significant i mean you know he throws the ball all over but he loves the tight end piece up the middle uh, for sure and it showed the other day but robert tanyan man he showed enough to me to let me know like hey i'm gonna pick him up as my tier two backup tight end in one of my leagues so uh man 33 fantasy points last week um he scored at least one touchdown in his last three games so I think this, you know, I don't think this is going to be a Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews guy uh, in terms of fantasy points, especially once Devontae comes back. But as a tier two tight end and in bigger leagues, maybe even a starter, I like him, especially with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. Yeah, and um, the Packers signed another wide receiver today, Reggie Bedrelton. Um, to the practice squad. I'm assuming that's just in case another wide receiver goes down, they can promote somebody. Um, Adam should be back soon. I'm assuming Lazard. I'm not sure how long he's going to be out, but I think they had a tight end go out this week. Did they not? Um, not sure. Yeah. Josiah. De, De Gura. I, I don't know. I know I'm not saying that right. I don't know how to say it. He tore his ACL Monday night. So Tanya is, He's due to, I mean, he had three touchdowns on Monday night, and now with another tight end to help, he's just going to be that much of a target uh, even mm-hmm. more. So, uh, yeah, if you didn't watch our Stardom Cinema video where we cover only fantasy football, um, check that out. We talk about Tanya's performance, talk about A-Rod, and who he's relying on with uh, Lazard and Devontae Adams out. Um, and now that you lose another tight end, Tanya's just going to have uh, even more of a, a better performance. Yeah, de- definitely. We'll, I mean, I even think, you know, honestly, with as, especially as much as Aaron Rodgers throws the ball, and as well as he throws it, um, you know, him, you know, Tanya may not get five, six targets a game, but that's still probably going to be four to five catches, you know. Um, and you know, finding the end zone in each of his last three games, from a fantasy fantasy perspective, that's what you look at. I mean, you look at a guy that can score, and that's getting receptions over the last two weeks he's combined 11 receptions and four touchdowns and well over 120 yards receiving so definitely guy would want my lineup if he's still available in in, a, in leagues yeah i'd say the only person that loves tight ends more than aaron Rodgers is probably uh the connection with Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews, uh, but Matt yeah. Ryan, Austin Hooper had a really good season last year. Uh, the past couple of years in fantasy, the number one tight end I pick up is whoever the Titans have. I picked up Austin Hooper two years in a row, and I picked up Hayden Hurst this year. Um, and yeah, I mean the tight end position is a viable one for fantasy if you can if you find the right one you just have to kind of know who to look for so i mean jimmy graham had a good performance last year with aaron Rodgers. um i don't think he had a lot of the catches but he 
Aaron Rodgers found ways to find Jimmy Graham in the red zone and in the end zone to get him scores. Um, that's exactly what he's going to do with Robert Tanyan. Um, but while we're here and talking about somewhat fantasy performances, we'll, t- we'll go ahead and shift to uh, the Falcons. And uh, one guy I want to touch on is Calvin Ridley, who had five targets, zero catches, a big eggshell on Monday night. Um, that's very, very uncharacteristic of him. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, point blank, I've got it on the screen. Falcons still suck. I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, I don't even know how. I don't – I mean, you can't. You really can't even say like, "All right, this is what needs to happen to turn them around," because the mm-hmm. offense is playing well. Defense is. I mean, they're in positions to win games each week. They just blow it. Um, yeah. I mean, they're they're banged up on defense. They're injury plagued, but as they have been the past couple of years, but they're still just blowing games, man. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. It's, you know, four games in, I don't really know too much. I know enough to know that they're giving me the coronavirus. But, you know, going back to Calvin Ridley, I do know for one one instance that Matt Ryan completely missed a wide-open touchdown pass to uh, Calvin Ridley. Um, But in terms of, you know, overall performance, no Julio, you would think, well, this guy's going to get, you know, he's been recently, what, a top three, if not number one receiver in terms of points. Uh, you would think with no Julio, yeah, this guy's going to get some catches. But you look at it from a defensive or an opponent standpoint, yeah, we're going to single out on Calvin Ridley. So I think that's more so what happened. I'm pretty sure he was a man with one over the top for the majority of the night that I noticed. Yeah, I think he so, was shadowed by Jair Alexander most of the night, which opened up uh, Zacchaeus to have a good night. Um, but, yeah, Hayden Hurst – had four catches. Christian Blake had three. Julio had four. Um, but yeah, Ridley just sitting there yeah. with a big goose egg, which is it's yeah, not likely. And, so I expect him to bounce back in a big way this week. And Julio really hasn't even like he. I know for sure he didn't play full snaps other night. So when I say you know he was kind of irrelevant, catching four passes for Julio is not something out of the ordinary. You know that's like a gimme. He's going to catch four to five passes a game, but I know I know that Dan Quinn did say um, he was going to be mainly utilized on second, long, third down situations only. So, yeah, he had, he had four catches, but he also had four targets. So every time he was throwing the ball, he catches it, and that's exactly why he's, in my eyes, top two wide receiver in the league, and he's not number two. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, if he can, if you can stay healthy, man, Julio's the best wide receiver in the league. So we hope that I agree. Hope that he can get back to full health soon. Um, but, yeah, man, I mean, the Falcons have got to find a way to turn around and kind of turn around quick. Um, but, uh, you know, if they don't, then NFC is going to get away from them, and that's mostly in the hands of the Packers. I think right now the Packers, it's it's theirs to lose. Um, I'm pulling up their schedule. you got the Buccaneers next week. Play the Texans, who are 0-4. You play the Vikings, who you've beat once. Uh, the 49ers, Jaguars, Colts, Bears, Eagles, um, I, I mean, you look at the schedule, yeah, they're probably going to lose one or two games, but I don't really know who could beat them. The Colts look really good right now. I think they're going to handle the Vikings. Um, the Buccaneers may beat them, but outside of that, I mean, who do, who do you see that could stop the, the Green Bay Packers? Uh, well, I, you know, I agree with you. I think that uh, Tampa Bay definitely has the best chance just in terms of leadership and players, which I know Tampa Bay is uh, – dealing with a lot of injuries as well, which I think can affect them here in about 15 minutes. But, you know, outside of them, maybe the 49ers. Uh, that's, I mean, that's really the only team I see. The, the, the Bears will compete, I think, but 49ers, Colts, are probably the two best, you know, teams, I think, unless they just slip up and have an off day all around. And, you know, another thing, let's add, Aaron Rodgers has definitely been on a tear, but uh, Aaron Jones, I mean, he's been a huge factor in this offensive success. Definitely opened up the passing game. Um, top top three fantasy running back, top five overall player in terms of fantasy points. So he's definitely playing a lot more. You know, he played a big role last year, but I think this year it's uh, it's been elevated. And that goes to say that, you know, he's he's usually on the injury side of things. He uh, struggles with some in recent years, but this year he looks healthy, man. He looks as good as ever, and I think that's a huge part of this team's offensive success. 
Yeah, I agree, and it, it kind of goes back to the same thing we were saying with Julio: is if you can stay healthy, your um, you know your performance is going to go up. And when Aaron is healthy, then he's he's really really dangerous. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I just want to touch on this really quick. Mike Evans is upgraded to active tonight, and did you see who they added to their active roster? Local guy. The uh, Buccaneers. Yeah. No, I did not. Josh Pearson. Uh, wide receiver at Jacksonville State last year who's been on their practice oh. squad. He got he may play something now. I don't know if he'll have a catch or not, but uh but yeah, uh Jacksonville State wide receiver Josh Pearson is a player for the Buccaneers and I thought that was pretty pretty neat. They had, they I activated mean, a cornerback too. Um don't know who that is though. A little side story here. I remember the uh when I was at Jacksonville, we did this 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 is how I uh figured out who Pearson was or whatever. Uh we played this little three-on-three tournament, and this guy walks in, and I could tell, you know, he's about to come in here and dunk on everybody. I mean, he was obviously bigger, stronger, taller. And the first time he touched the ball, I'm pretty sure he about kissed the rim, and I was like, who is that guy? And somebody said, he'll play in the NFL one day. Um, so congrats to him. That's huge. I hope uh, nothing but success for him. He's got literally the greatest quarterback of all time. I'm um, throwing the ball to him, so – Wishing the best. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully he'll get a couple of touches tonight. Not only reps, but a couple, couple targets. That would, that would be pretty cool to see. Um, I think, I, I think I've spoke with Josh one time, um, and he seemed like a pretty cool guy from, from what I know. Mm-hmm. Um, haven't, you know, don't talk to him. I haven't talked to him a lot, but I, I've, I've talked to him at least once that I can remember. Um, but yeah, so that's something to keep an eye out tonight. Uh, but we'll get away from uh, from that game and we'll move on to the Cardinals where um, we talked about Kyler. We needed to start him this week if you have that option in your fantasy league. Um, it goes back to what we touched on a week or two ago. Uh, are the Cardinals overhyped or are they just playing good teams? Or did they start out hot and they're going to slow down and get hot again? Uh, where, where do you think the Cardinals stand at this point in the season? Um, you know, I think I did overhop them at the beginning, but I'm not completely uh, losing touch on them. You know, I think the loss to the Lions was probably their worst loss. You know, that you look at the, the margin of victory, the Panthers did win by 10. But on a side note, Carolina is looking great, even without probably the most prolific two-way player in all of football history. Um, they're looking like they just they're keep picking up where they left off, you know. So that loss to me, I'm not, you know, it's a loss, yeah, but is it as bad as the Lions? I don't think so. Sitting at two and two, I'm looking at their schedule. You know, they're going to play the Seahawks twice, play the Bills once, 49ers uh, once, so, or twice. I've already played them, but, you know, they got a hard, hard road ahead, play the Rams twice. Um, definitely a tough division, tough schedule, but, if they can if they can escape, you know, winning six or seven in their next remainder games, remainder of games, uh I think they'll be able, I still think they can contend for a playoff spot. Yeah, I think it comes down to more or less they are just they they're set up for success, but their schedule does not do them any favors at all. Like you said, they yeah. have a very tough division, but on top of that they also play the Patriots, they play the Rams. Um, and they play the Cowboys, they play the Bills. Um, so even your nine NFC opponents, you're playing against the, the AFC East, the AFC North, um, with the Bills, the Patriots, and the Dolphins. So, I mean, the Dolphins, you could see, I mean, that's November 8th, man. We may see two at that point. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, two is getting close. The fact that they had to come out and say, you know, we're going to discuss him starting this week. Um, I, I think that would be a fun one to see. Two in the Dolphins versus Kyler and the Cardinals. Um, that's a month away from today, exactly. Um, and that's coming off the... They play the Jets on Sunday. They play the Cowboys the week after that. And they play the Seahawks six days later. So, it'll be... It'll be interesting to see how the next three games go for the Cardinals. Um... I think that'll both, define their season, really. Yeah, I do too. Um, I wrote down that they're going to finish the season six and ten, just because I mean they're 
they're in a very, very good um, division, and that's not going to do them any favors at all. It's right. just, you know, they, they have a decent team, but I just don't think they're at that level of the Seahawks and the Rams yet, which puts them at maybe finding a wild card spot some way, somehow, and getting in. Yeah. Um, well, one thing, too, that I think hurts them, you know, I know you'll agree, um, like the Lions game. That that's a game you have to win if you're looking at your schedule playing your division plus the Bills, the Cowboys, the Patriots, you know. Those games and even you could even argue the Panthers, even though they do look good, you know, you beat Washington, you beat you got a huge win week one against forty ers Um but the Lions and the Panthers, those are two games that you just I feel like you gotta win those to compete with the re- remainder of the schedule. Because I don't, I don't think the Eagles are going to be an easy game. The Dolphins are going to play them hard. Um, Giants, that should be a win. You know, you look at these these smaller games in terms of the teams they're playing. Um, those are those are the games you got to win. And already losing two out of the three, um, not a good look, not a good start. Definitely not what I was expecting. I know you feel the same. So, got to win those games. Yeah, they're going to have to win their non-division games to have any chance at it. Um, the Jets, it, it, let's say if they won their non-division games, they would be a win over the Jets, a win over the Dolphins, Bills, and Patriots. That puts them at five wins on the season. Um, then they still have the, the Giants and the Eagles. That would put them at seven. So, I mean, they could finish the season seven and nine. Like, I mean, we both said six and ten. We threw that out there. It's very likely, but they're, they're going to have to tighten up on those non-divisional games. And yeah. if they could steal a division game or two, um, maybe against the Cowboys, potentially against the 49ers again. Well, I don't know. That's after Christmas. I'm assuming they'll be back almost full health at that point. Richard Sherman should be back soon. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we both said that they're going to have to win their, win their non-divisional games if they have any chance at making the playoffs or finish the season around 500. Winning these next two games before the Seahawks, like especially the Cowboys, um, that definitely could say a lot going forward. Because you, if you, if you beat, you know, the Jets and the Cowboys back to back weeks, and then you play the Seahawks, and say you do lose, but you turn right around and beat the Dolphins, that's a three and one rec- record over the next four weeks against two, the Cowboys and Seahawks teams that I think are, you know, for sure playoff contenders. Um, so that'll be huge. That Cowboys game, I've got that one highlighted. That Monday night game, that'll be a really yep. good one in two weeks. Or, yeah, two weeks from Monday. So they got they got to get it going right now. I mean, there's no more time to waste. Can't sit back on it any longer. Yeah, definitely um, gut check time for the 49ers. And you're saying that, and we're sitting at week five of the season. So uh, yeah, it'll be fun to see how the, the Cardinals season plays out. Um, I mentioned Tua. Uh, a highly talented rookie in the NFL. The question becomes, when do we see him? Uh, but we'll, we'll cover a couple rookies that we've seen this far in the season. Um, I've got four guys wrote down. Um, I think we can agree on two of them, Burrow and Herbert. Um, mm-hmm. Who are, who are some of your top rookies in the in the NFL at this point in the season? Um, yeah, outside of those two, uh, Joe Burrow is probably my front runner right now. Um, given the team he's playing on, picking up his first win last week. Um, I think he's a great quarterback. Justin Herbert has came in and, you know, excited. Yeah, he's making the game excited. You know, I've uh, tuned into the Chargers games more so than recent years with Phillip Rivers. But uh, outside of those two guys, I would say, you know, my top guy is probably going to be Justin Jefferson, receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, first two weeks were mediocre, but the last two weeks, man, 11 catches, 278 yards on 14 targets, a um, couple touchdowns. Definitely a deep ball threat. Um, no more Stephon Diggs. So you're looking for that window for a guy to come in that window to help Adam Thielen out and help Dalvin Cook out. And Justin Jefferson has proved himself, especially over the last two weeks. So he is my uh, sleeper guy in terms of rookie of the year campaign. But uh, another guy I like to talk about is James Robinson. Um Running back to the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, nobody. I don't. I think he was rostered in maybe like, I think it was less than 20% of leagues. And then after the first two weeks, he was rostered in 97% of leagues. So coming off, he's a top 10 back right now. 
somebody I'm looking at. And of course, Clyde Edwards Eler is one of the guys that can be talked about. But other than those guys, um, Burrow still remains my uh, my front runner. Yeah, James Robinson with a good performance against the Dolphins that kind of sprung him in the right direction. Um, I agree with you. I think I think if you compared their circumstances, Burrow and Herbert, I I would kind of put them on the even playing field where you had Burrow was the guy from the day he's been drafted. Um, so he had all this preparation time knowing like, hey, he's the starter. You have to learn it. This is on your shoulders. You know, things of that nature where Herbert was kind of threw into the fire unexpectedly, you know, expecting mm-hmm. him to, to groom, I would say probably half the season, um, kind of see how Tyrod and the Chargers do. If they're doing great, keep Tyrod in, uh, let Herbert keep growing. If not, midway through the season, put Herbert in. Kind of the same way we're going to see with Tua. Um, I think the Chargers are the best bet for Justin Herbert. You know, there were talk that if uh, Miami took Herbert, then Tua is going to L.A. I think it – I think where they ended up is best for both quarterbacks. Um, I don't think Herbert mm-hmm. would be having this much success if he was in Miami. Um, so you touched on Justin Jefferson uh, and Robinson. I'm going to go a different route, and uh, I'm going to go with the defensive side of the ball. And obviously you got Chase Young, who who got injured last week, but he's had he's had a pretty good season, um, not statistic-wise, but just the force and what he's allowed uh, Darren Payne and Jonathan Allen to do so far in this season. Um, he, he requires, requires such attention that he opens up that Washington defense. Um, and I mean, they haven't played bad, you know, they, they lost, uh, to the Cardinals where they gave up 30 points. They beat the Eagles. Um, but just that, that Washington defense as a whole looks a lot better. Um, they picked off Baker, I think a time or two, um, and then they lose only by 14 to the Ravens. Um, so Washington's definitely taking the steps in the right direction defensively. They just, they, they're not getting much uh, help from their offense. And I think Chase Young is going to have, going to finish the season strong as long as he can stay healthy. Another mm-hmm. guy I've got is Antoine Winfield, um, the cornerback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who through four games has 25 tackles, two sacks, and one forced fumble. Um, you know, you're playing a cornerback, you're not going to have a lot of sacks and fumbles and tackles for loss and things of that nature, but he's playing really, really well consistently. Um He's just he's came into a role where, you know, the Tampa Bay defense has been all right. Um, you know, obviously last year it kind of goes back to Jamison or Jameis Winston throwing 30 interceptions. It puts the defense in bad positions to where the numbers don't look good. Um, but it was still a defense that needed help, and Antoine Winfield has made that. He's provided a boost to that Buccaneers defense for sure. Mm-hmm. I agree. I'm actually playing a league that has. Uh... You don't draft a defense. You draft defensive players. Yeah. And uh, I was scrolling through in recent weeks, and I was like, man, who is this guy? And, you know, it said rookie. So I started reading up more of him. But, yeah, the the total amount of tackles that he's had is just uh, to fit right into a defense um, like he has. Uh, it says a lot about his versatility. And I know he's, you know, he plays a lot of safety as well. Um the games I've watched, I think I've seen him lined up at safety the majority of the game. But uh, somebody that can play both and cover and, and be a run stopper like he is puts him in the conversation for sure. Yeah, he's um, there's lots of good rookies this year. I mean, we're talking about mm-hmm. this, and we didn't even mention CeeDee Lamb. Uh, Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor. G- Judy had his first touchdown last week. Henry Ruggs coming back from injury this week. Um it's just it's a really stacked rookie class, um, especially on the offensive mm-hmm. side of the ball. Um, so it'll be interesting as the year goes on to see who's front runner for rookie of the year offensively and defensively. Um, but another guy who he's not a rookie, but uh, he kind of had his official debut, I would say, is uh, Damian Harris. I don't think he had many touches over last season. Um, he mm-hmm. came in on Monday night to replace Sony Michelle and. Uh, had a big game. He had 17 carries, 100 yards. Didn't find the end zone, but just overall to be your first appearance of the year and no preseason, nothing like that. He, he had a really good um, impact, and I think he's going to be a solid back for Bill Belichick and Cam and um, I guess whoever replaces Cam for the time being. Um, I think he's going to get a lot of touches. I think he's going to be a running back that will put up Sonny Michelle top numbers, especially playing for the Patriots. Um, 
So I'm excited to see Damian Harris back. Yeah, I, um, you know, in terms of fantasy, I don't really trust any of the of New England's backfield, but and but for Damian Harris, you're looking at a guy that uh, you know last week 100 yards, um, bigger running back compared to what they have. You know, I compare him to Rex Burkhead. He's going to get a lot of touches, I think, you know, on the goal line or short yard situations. So that's a big thing for a fantasy aspect. Um, yeah, but it's good to finally see him back in action. Uh, I know he'll help out tremendously and mix things up for Bilicek and the, and the Patriots. But uh, nice performance against the Chiefs. He was not, you know, a bad defense. Yeah, I would definitely not expect him to put up 100 yards. Um for sure, especially on the ground, maybe throw in some some catches. Um, but yeah, I picked up two first downs, and I, pu- I pulled up his stats from last year. He played in two games, had four carries for 12 yards. So I would I would claim that that was his official NFL debut, if you will, even though he's not a rookie. Um, uh-huh. But nonetheless, he played very well against the former Super Bowl champions um, and a really really good defense. His third round pick. Um, so he's averaging six yards on the on the season. Uh, I put him as my stardom for this week at receiver, uh, running back. I would expect him to get a lot of touches and put up a decent amount of numbers, uh, possibly find the end zone. Um, but I guess we'll just have to see. Um, and I saw earlier, I'll see if I can find it real quick. Bills, t- okay, I just saw this. Bills Titans game for Sunday has been moved to Tuesday. Um, as long as there's no more positive test. And then the Broncos and the Patriots originally scheduled for. Sunday will be played Monday night due to COVID positives. So while we're mm-hmm. on the topic of the Patriots, I'll go ahead and throw that out there um, for anyone that didn't know. Um, but yeah, so we'll go from rookies to one of the vets in the league in that of Drew Brees. And there was a lot of slack after the Raiders performance saying that he can't throw the ball, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, in my eyes, the Saints are the best two and two team in the NFL. I can agree. Uh, you know, any team I feel like that had Drew Brees on their on their squad as their quarterback is going to be a a great team. Uh, I think last week was his best passing performance on on the year, if I'm not mistaken, and that's still without Michael Thomas. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, where it stacks up to uh, other performances this season. I'd have to look that up. But for Alvin Kamara, um, through week four, he is first in uh, yards after catch, first in receiving yards after contact, and first in touchdowns in the NFL. So even with, you know, it doesn't really matter how Bro- um, Breeze is playing. When you have a running back that's putting up incredible numbers like that um you know it makes your quarterback look good and it makes just the team overall seem better than they are essentially mm-hmm. but um but yeah so you talked about breeze putting up season best numbers um something just while i got it pulled up i want to touch on is the lowest percent of accurate passes this season, according to PFF. Dwayne Haskins was number 30 in the league with 50.4. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky was 46.2. Carson Wentz is currently sitting at 42.8. That means four out of every ten passes he throws is accurate. Six out of every ten is inaccurate. I find that to be um, a little outstanding. You know, yeah, that's especially c- for a first-round pick. That's why. First pick. No. Yeah, that's why pick, last actually. week we had. Uh, we were talking about putting Jalen in, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, Breeze is, yeah, Breeze is st- statistically um, and historically one of the most accurate passers in the league. And mm-hmm. I saw where, you know, it always, people were mentioning his arm strength, does he still have it, or whatever. Um, I think this week was his longest average target. Um if you get what I'm trying to say, like his average throw was the length deeper. of the pass, yeah, yeah, it was deeper than it's been all season too. So, mm-hmm. you know, I don't think he had any big, long throws, but he finds a way to get the job done. He found Trey Trey Smith or Traquan Smith a couple times for the end zone, I believe twice. Um, 
And, I mean, when you can get the ball to Kamara and he can dance 300 yards down the field uh, after catch or after contact, like, it's it's unreal. Like, you don't have to throw the ball 50, 60, 70 yards. Like, Herbert Herbert leads the NFL in 50-plus yard passing touchdowns with two. Herbert or Breeze don't have to make those throws when you can get it to, you know, short routes and then have them do the rest of the work. Yeah, you know, and I think Drew Brees is not somebody that's just going to, you know, as we've seen with young Justin Herbert, you know, he's made a lot of throws down the field that we're like, man, but you don't see Drew Brees making those throws. I think he's more the guy that's like, well, if I have to check down, I'll check down and I'll let Kamara run for 40 yards, you know. So I think that's one thing. His decision-making is what sets him apart from the rest of the league. But uh, I think especially once Michael Thomas gets back, I'm not sweating the Saints team. I think they're going to get back in the conversation. Um, it's just it's it's a matter of having everybody healthy, adapting to the season, and figuring out the kinks. You know, they played most of the year last year without Kamara, so got him back this year better as I've ever seen him. You know, so I'm not going to worry about Drew Brees, especially when it comes to deep balls. He's going to do his thing, and he's he's going to Drew Brees. I mean, what more is there to say? Yeah, I mean that's one thing. Breeze, Breeze doesn't really turn the ball over a lot. He he will, um, you know, at most once per game. Anything other than that's uh, very uncharacteristic. Um, but like on on Sunday, he went 19 for 25 with only one bad pass, and it was his first pass of the game. And after that, he was 19 for 24. Um, so you take away that one pass, and it's a completely different game. He had a 76 percent completion percentage. Um, for 250 yards, and they won. They put up 30 something points. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah, I agree. I think once Michael Thomas is back, and you know everything gets back in the smooth sailing for the Saints, they're, they're still going to win the NFC South. Falcons definitely aren't going to win it. The Buccaneers. That's the really the only team that can give them a run for their money. Um, and then the Panthers are fighting for third place above the Falcons, um, which, you know, those two teams play on Sunday. So so we'll see how that how that turns out. But uh, so we've talked about so we talked about the Packers, Falcons, Cardinals, rookies, Damian Harris, Andrew Brees. Anything else you want to touch on? Uh, any team, any performance from a player or anything like that? Well, I was going to say, you know, we usually do our MVP thing, and I'm sure it still remains the same. You know, my top three is still Rodgers, Russell, and uh, Mahomes. You know, they're not really any specific order right now. But somebody I want to I ask your opinion on, what do you think of Dak Prescott right now? Man, I don't know. Um, I, he's top five in the league in passing yards. I know that for a fact. Mm-hmm. Um, he's... He's put up almost 800 yards and five touchdowns in two games. So, yeah, he threw know, for 500 that, last week. So yeah. So he's, I mean, he's definitely playing on a different level than the, the Dak Prescott we saw last year. Um, it is his contract year, you know. Mm-hmm. He's trying to get that yeah. taken care of, but Jerry ain't budging. So, I mean, he's been balling to say the least. Like he's performed really well. He should have had another touchdown there at the end of the game against the Browns. I don't think you saw it. Uh, they were driving down the field inside the red zone. He threw a slant to Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper didn't think he was going to throw it. Uh, so he kind of gave up on his route because there was a linebacker there and then the corner was actually on... I don't know if it was man uh, with a zone mix or if it was just a really good play by the corner. Uh, corner jumped the route and um, ended up being an interception for Dak that I don't think... Uh, should have ever happened. So that kind of takes away from Dak's performance a little bit. Um, but, I mean, yeah, he's been playing well nonetheless, and he kind of has to play well. I mean, he's getting paid $30-something million this year, but mm-hmm. if he wants Jerry Jones to sign any kind of contract and want any kind of pull over what you know what's said and what kind of offer he gets, um, then he's going to have to perform well. And um, he's thrown for 1,700 yards somewhere in there on the season. So, uh, I mean, if he keeps performing like this, then he may end up in the MVP conversation. But, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, so I, I was asking that before we got into the MVPs, but since we're here, mine, mine's the same as yours. You got Allen, A-Rod, Wilson, and Mahomes. Um, all of those guys, they're combined, let's say 23-36, 52-3 touchdown-to-interception ratio. Um, 
the only interceptions, Russell and uh, Josh Allen. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're playing really well. It's kind of hard to put one over the other. You look at stat lines, and they don't really do it. You know, if you look at stat lines, then Josh Allen's a favorite. You look at Russell Wilson's performance, I think he's the favorite. But then you look at A-Rod, and you're like, eh, yeah, he's he's the favorite. And then you're like, Mahomes. Yeah. It's like, well, how can you say Mahomes isn't better than any of these three? So, yeah, and I don't, right now I don't think in terms of MVP talk, you know, I, I still think Russell's probably my front runner if I had to choose one, um, just in terms of consistency and what he's done so far. But you, you look at somebody like Aaron Rodgers, who is a great quarterback, but look at what he's playing with. He's not playing with the same team he played with the week before. He's not throwing to the same guys he threw at, you know, the last five games of the year last year, anything like that, and he's still doing what he's done. Um, that's definitely MVP worthy performance, but you know, still, again, I don't think because Patrick Mahomes is also, I think, playing. You know, he had he had not as normal as a Patrick Mahomes game this past week against the Patriots, but still, he is being Patrick Mahomes and making his name heard. As potentially, by the time he's done, I think he's definitely going to be in the mix for the greatest quarterback, if not greatest player of all time. So. Yeah, I mean, there's no clear cut front runner at this point in the position or season, like you said. I think if I had to pick a favorite, I'm going with uh, Russell Wilson, maybe Josh Allen. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's too close right now to tell who is who would be a favorite. And uh, you know, it's if the Seahawks and they, and the Packers run the table, then it's going to be really hard to decide between those two who is. Um, mm-hmm. who's the favorite. But like you said, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is even more impressive when you look at who he's having to work with or who he's having to throw to and things like that. Um, yep. But, yeah, I mean, it could go either way. The MVP race is, is very uh, very early in the season, um, so you don't really know who's doing what. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll keep an eye on that and see uh, see how it pans out. What if um, if you had to pick an MVP non quarterback, who are you? Who would you be looking at? Uh, right now, Alvin Kamara. Yeah, I agree with I that. Don't, I don't really, you know, you could possibly even say Aaron Jones, uh, Tyler Lockett, even. Yeah, maybe um, DK, possibly. <clears throat> Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I mean, in my eyes, I'm going Kamara a hundred percent. Um, it's just, I mean, it's a, it's a quarterback league, man. Like CMC should have won it last year in my opinion, but just because of how quarter, it's the same, like we talked about with the, the Heisman race. I mean, quarterbacks get more attention no matter who it is. Um, right. McCaffrey was screwed out of a, I don't want to say screwed out of, I'm going to say any other year McCaffrey would have won the Heisman in college. Should have won the MVP in the NFL. So it's a quarterback's league, and we're just living in it. Um, but yeah, so uh, that'll, I guess that'll kind of wrap up our MVP conversation. Um, anything else you want to touch on that before we get into our picks for this week? Uh, no, I think we covered it all according to the uh, agenda. Yeah, to the good old schedule, we'll hop into. That's not it. There it is. Week five preview. Okay. Find my way through OBS. We will uh, we'll start them off. Tonight's game going on right now as we speak. Buccaneers, Bears. Who are you taking? Uh, on paper, I have the Buccaneers to win this game. Um, I think this is one of those games that could go either way based off of quarterback performance. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, Tampa Bay is dealing with injuries, but at the same time, uh, they're still Tampa Bay. Uh, they got good playmakers, uh, overall better defense than you know what we're used to in the Buccaneers. So I think this will be a low-scoring game. Uh, Chicago is traditionally good defense, still mediocre defense, a little a little better than average. But uh, being in Chicago, um, I think you know, like we've always said, fans don't really make a difference, but the weather might. Um, it's probably a lot colder there, which probably, you know, really doesn't affect the players. It can. Who knows? But in terms of who I think will win this game, I'm rolling with the Bucks, man. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go with that as well. Um, they the way they performed in the second half last week, coming back from down big and winning that game. Um, Got to go with Tampa, Tampa Bay. Um, it's kind of hard to not go with the goat, uh, as some would call him. Uh, we'll save that discussion for maybe we'll do a video on that one day. Is who's the goat in the NFL? Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean it's hard not to go with them. Um, played really well in the second half. I, I think that momentum continues, and they uh, they beat the the Bears tonight. And uh, I'll tell you this: I don't think a lot of people realize this, um, and it may just be a one a one game kind of thing. You know, a lot of people were blaming Mr. Trubisky, um, but the way Nick Foles performed last week, you could throw it out there that the the quarterback is not the problem, and Matt Nagy is. Just yeah, I mean, I'm going to raise awareness said, to know, that. I think Trubisky makes you know decisions that aren't the best, but at the same time, you know, I also think that. Uh, who he has around him plays plays a huge role. So, and they, they don't really outside of Allen Robinson. I don't know of uh, many star receivers on that team that uh, <clears throat> are worthy enough for you know star caliber caliber talk. Um, yeah, I mean it could be coaching. You know, who knows play calling. Yeah, it was, it was just something that, you know, a lot of people were riding on Mr. Bisky, and I was like, well, you know, Nick Foles didn't perform that well on Saturday t- or Sunday, too. So at what point do you say, okay, well, maybe Mr. Bisky wasn't the problem. Maybe it's maybe it's play calling or scheme or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll carry on and get down to um, the Falcons and the Panthers. Um, scared to take any team in this, honestly. The Panthers have been playing really, really well. Falcons have got to win a game eventually, right? I mean, they they're, they're yeah. not going to go zero and sixteen. Uh, I hope. Yeah, but is this the week they get the win? I think I so. Have, I do too. Just because they have, like I touched on earlier, they have the defensive guys coming back. Matt Ryan um, did not play well against the Packers, and yet he still played. I think the best player on Atlanta. Um, in terms of like each individual performance, I think he played the best. So um, I, I'm taking the Falcons over the Panthers. I think the Panthers somewhat are in a fluke stage where you win two games after losing your MVP running back. Um, so I think their their uphill streak is going to decline a little bit, and uh, I think the Falcons pull this one out. Yeah, I agree with you. I hope uh... – you know, being in Atlanta, I think that'll be a good first win, maybe to get things back going. Um, I hope so. I really do. But I, I do believe they will win. I think this is their first win of the year, like you said. So, All right. So after uh, we have the Bills and Titans, who are supposed to be scheduled for Tuesday. Um, how do you see that one panning up? Um, Tennessee's defense has given up, I think, a minimum, you know, 28, 30 points to all four teams they've played, or three teams they've played this year. Um, I like Buffalo. I'm still on the Buffalo train. They've looked great. They've been consistent. Uh, I think it'll be a high-scoring game. Um, And, you know, this is one of those games, you know, I told you A.J. Brown Brown is back this week. It could go either way um, in terms of how Ryan Tannehill plays, but overall I think Buffalo pulls this one out in a high-scoring matchup. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, if that game gets played, I'm taking Buffalo in that one. Josh Allen's just playing too good. Um, and with the Titans not being on the football field legally uh, for the past couple past couple days, almost two weeks, um, I'm, I'm going to go with the Bills in that one. Head on down to, I believe, Kansas City is where this game is being played. Um, Raiders at Chiefs. Chiefs going to handle this one. Uh, yep. with good faith. Derek Carr said he's tired of losing uh, or tired of playing bad, something along those lines. I don't think it ends this week. I got the Chiefs winning that one pretty big. Yep, I agree. I'm, I'm with the Chiefs by a couple scores. Next, we have the Jets and the Cardinals. We touched on that a little bit earlier. We both are big fans in uh, Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury, DeAndre Hopkins, Kenyon Drake, due for a big game. Um, I think we both see the Cardinals taking that one. What about the Eagles and Steelers? How do you see that one panning out? Uh, I've got Pittsburgh. You know, you know, last week Philadelphia escaped with 
you know, what I think is a good win. Um, but in, in terms of these two teams, I think Pittsburgh's defense is the better um, between the two. So I think they pulled this one out. I think it's a close one. I think it's low scoring. Um, but I think Pittsburgh escapes. Sloppy game. I think this is going to be a sloppy game all around. But, uh, yeah, I like Pittsburgh in this one. Yeah, I think the Steelers' defense is just too good right now, um, in my opinion. I think they're going to handle this one. Carson Wentz has been too inconsistent, like I touched on a minute ago. He's the worst completion percentage in the NFL among starting quarterbacks. Um, the two in front of him are both benched. I think his time is coming if they don't turn it around quickly. Uh, they were blessed last week with abysmal quarterback play by the 49ers. Should not have won that game, but they did. Um, mm-hmm. They pulled that one out of their ass. Um so I'm gonna go with the Steelers over over Philadelphia this week, um, and then I'll go ahead and get on the the 49ers Dolphins. Uh, we talked about that. They have a lot of people coming back from injury. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go with the 49ers on that one in a close one. I don't think it'll be that big of a blowout, um, but I've got the 49ers winning that one over Miami as well. Um, yeah, I'm the same. I'm taking 49ers. I was kind of taking a different route. I think it's a blowout win. Um, especially if Raheem Mostert plays, I think that helps. You know, George Kittle's back, Debo Samuel's back. I, I know, you know, probably no Jimmy G, but <clears throat> your playmakers are back across the field. It's going to spread things out. I think they put up a lot of points. Yeah, I think I can I can agree with that. I think there's a good bit of people that will um, expect that one to be a high-scoring game. Um, so, It'll be a close game, nonetheless. Uh, but yeah, I think I think the 49ers win that one, Jimmy G or not. I think Jimmy G is going to play. I think he will if he's healthy. Um, I don't see him sitting another game and then right. risking another loss. Um, we'll carry on with the Rams and the Washington Football Team with Kyle Allen as the starting quarterback. Um, I'm assuming you're going to take the Rams in that one. Uh, let's see here. You got it listed. Yep, I got the Rams. Um, I still think their passing game is one of the best in the league, <clears throat> especially in terms of players and consistency with those players. But, uh, yeah, I like the Rams in a close one. Yeah. Um, the way that the Sean McVay offense operates with Jared Goff and all their offensive weapons, um, I, th- I think the Rams are always going to be a team that could win any game they're in. Um, it just kind of mm-hmm. comes down to who they're playing against. Like when they play the Packers and the Seahawks, that game could go either way. They're probably not going to be favored, but if they won, I don't think anybody would be surprised. Um, but yeah. this week, this week that that's not the case. Um, they're going up against the Washington football team, who we all I think we all can agree that they should win that one pretty handily. Next, we got Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, um, rookie of the year versus former MVP. Um, Ravens are going to take that one. J.K. Dobbins, Mark Ingram, Mark Andrews. Um, Ravens are just too good defensively, too good offensively, top to bottom. Um, did not play well against the Chiefs, and I still think they're kind of mad about that. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with the Ravens. Um, but while, while we're on this topic, and before I forget it, are you uh, are you familiar with the current trend on TikTok? Uh, I haven't been on TikTok in a while. Trace McSorley so, uh, is... Uh, just the big thing on TikTok right now, man. I don't, I don't know why. There's like a, uh, I'll find, I'll find one and send it to you. But everybody is all over Trace McSorley right now, um, and for some reason, I kind of want to see him play. I don't know why. I just do, and I think this week against the Bengals, it might happen. So who, who is this guy? What's going on? Trace McSorley was the quarterback at Penn State when Saquon Barkley was there. Um, he's the backup to Lamar Jackson. Um, He's a okay. I don't want to say he's the same type of player as Lamar Jackson because Lamar's kind of in a category of his own. But he's a he's a pretty decent quarterback. I liked him at Penn State. I picked Penn State to win a couple of games just because Trace McSorley was there, and I felt that confident in him. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just got on TikTok one day, and there's a sound like a rap about Trace McSorley or a Trace McSorley recorded this rap or something. Something along those lines. I don't know, but I can't get on TikTok now without seeing Trace McSorley on my timeline. Yeah, you have, you have to send that to me. I'd like to see that. As far as playing time, though, I don't, I don't, I don't know if he'll play unless Lamar gets, he'll play unless Lamar gets injured. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm with you. I think Baltimore does win this one, though. 
Alrighty. Uh, Texans Jaguars. Do the Texans pick up their first win, even though they are basically head coachless at this point? Um, I actually have <clears throat> Jacksonville chose to win this game. Uh, that was my big thing was no coach. Um, I think this could go either way. This is one of those games that's not going to necessarily you know, mean anything in terms of, hey, I have to watch this game because there's a lot on the line here. Um, it'll just it'll just be another football game for the day for me. But I had Jacksonville winning that one in a close one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the Texans. I think just the fact that um, the way the season's been going, you know, you see a lot of times where head coaches get fired and somehow or another that sparks a fire in the team, and then they come out and they win the next game. And I think that's what's gonna happen this week. You see a lot of uh, like with what happened with Dabo. Um, and numerous other interim head coaches at or drawing once once the players get a coach that they like or get rid of a head coach that they don't like um, they rally behind them and they perform really well and I think that's what's going to happen this week I can see I see the Texans winning it I have the Texans winning it and I hope I kind of hope they do so yeah, I'd like to see Deshaun uh, get his get first win on the season. He's took a lot of backlash so far this year. I think um, doesn't have the playmakers that he's usually had, and, and especially in D Hop when it, yeah. in terms of throwing the ball. Will Fuller has been impressive though, and yep. you still got David Johnson who is you know a little slightly above average running back in the league. So maybe they do get their first win. I'd like to see it for Deshaun's sake, but choosing between the two, I'm going with Jacksonville. Yeah, well, we'll get to another game that uh, could go either way, I think, and that's the Colts and the Browns. Both teams look really good. Both defenses will look really good. Um, Hall of Fame quarterback Phillip Rivers versus Baker Mayfield, who I think this has been his best performance in his career so far. Um, I don't know if the stats back that up, but just from a visual standpoint. Um, but I think the way they performed in the second half last week, I think they just did a lot to catch the um, – Cowboys on the edge. Uh, you know, Jarvis Landry had a touchdown pass to OBJ. OBJ had a ridiculous reverse that they that he housed. Um, Dak shouldn't have been picked off at the end zone there at the end of the game. So, you know, the the, the Browns played good. I don't want to take anything away from them, um, but I feel like the Falcons, or sorry, the Cowboys underperformed like they did against the Falcons, and it just so happens that the Browns were able to hold them off. Um, so for that reason, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Colts. I think the Browns' hot streak kind of simmers down this week. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I feel really confident in Indianapolis. Um, one one key thing to me, well, first say I agree with you. I'm taking the Colts as well. But let me say this: um, I think one thing that plays a good role in this week's outcome is no Nick Chubb for a few weeks actually. But on another positive note, if uh, you do have Kareem Hunt, I would look at him as Putting him as your RB1, RB2, he's already a top 10 back in the league in terms of fantasy. So look for Kareem Hunt. I know he's dealing with a groin injury right now. I don't think it's uh, serious. But look at him to have a big game the next – actually, let me say big games the next few weeks. So, uh, But in terms of who's going to win this game, I think this is going to be a defensive game, and I think the Colts have the better defense. And I like Indianapolis. Yeah, uh, we're going to be a really good game. I'm looking forward to that one uh, for sure. Going to make sure um, Red Zone covers that one a lot, hopefully. Uh, Giants-Cowboys. Giants did not play that bad last week. Um, nope. But what concerns me is the Cowboys didn't play that great, um, and I'm thinking that the roles are going to kind of reverse this week, and especially the fact that the Giants only have three touchdowns on the season. That is less than one touchdown per game. Um, Cowboys win this one big. I'm thinking two or three scores. Yeah, I like the Cowboys as well. Um, I think we see a big game from Zeke this week. Um, you know, he's he's been Zeke. You know, he's put up great numbers, fantasy, of course, receptions and, and short yardage touchdowns. But I've been seeing a lot more talk about the receiving core for uh, the Cowboys and how many passing yards Dak has had. So I'm looking at Zeke to have a big game this week. Yep. Um, I'm with you. I think they went by a couple scores. I don't think this is a game that uh, <clears throat> Dallas should lose, you know, especially if they're wanting to make a great playoff run or be a top seed 
in uh in the playoffs. I think this is one of those games that they need to keep you know keep driving the nail on the head and make sure it's a statement win. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Um, I think the Cowboys have to, you know, they're kind of just like a lot of these teams are the NFL. They got to find their groove and they got to find it quickly. They they've played um, not too well in the first half of a lot of games, and I think if they can turn that around, then you know they might add another win or two to their resume. Um, Broncos Patriots, who have been moved to Monday night, uh, so we have another doubleheader Monday night matchup. I love it. I'm, if Drew Locke was playing this game, I'm taking the Broncos. Um, but the fact that Cam's out, as far as I know, Cam's out. I don't think he can play. Stephon Gilmore's yep. out. Um, but I, I still feel the Patriots get this one pulled out, and that's why that's kind of why I said Damian Harris is going to be due for a big game on Sunday or Monday now, um, just for the fact that Cam's out, and I don't think Brian Hoyer or Jarrett Stidham could will single-handedly get the job done. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's a very good point, and I did put this into consideration when, but I'm going to go different than you. Um, I like the Broncos. I'm going to stick, you know, last week I said Melvin Gordon was going to have a big game against the Jets on Thursday night, and he did. Um, I think he scored twice, found the end zone twice, but uh, I'm going to stay on the Melvin Gordon train. I think if they do win this week, and I predict them to, it's only because Melvin Gordon – has another big game. so, And I'm pretty sure Phil Lindsay comes back this week. I think he'll get medium amount of touches. Uh, yeah, probably less does. than 10 plays, I'm assuming. But that's a big thing going forward for them, you know, especially with no quarterback. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm taking Denver in this one. I think this, this was the game I have star beside. I think this will be my, I guess you could say, upset of the week, even though New England is not traditional New England. Um, I think Denver runs away with this one. Yeah, I mean, the Denver Broncos defense played really well last week. Um, Would not be surprised if this is a repeat this week. I mean, Mm -hmm. like you said, I can see it going either way. Um, But we'll we'll just have to wait and see on Monday night. Um, So for the Sunday night game, we have the Seahawks and the Vikings. Um, That's another game I see going either way. I think think the Seahawks pull it out in a close one by one score or less, maybe three or four points. Um, they did not play really well last week, and I'm expecting them to come out this week um, pissed off and you know want to make a point. Um, but you're also without Jamal Adams again for the second straight week, and I think that's gonna. I think Jamal Adams provided provided a bigger boost to that defense than a lot of people realize. Um, mm-hmm. So for that reason, I'm thinking I'm thinking the Vikings keep this one close, but the Seahawks do pull it out. Yeah, um, I've got Seattle to win as well. Um, one thing I've been keeping an eye on is. Uh, Viking star receiver Adam Thielen, who is dealing with a shoulder injury. Uh, I know the last two days he has been a limited participant in practice. Um, I think he'll play, but do not be surprised if he's sitting. So um, I think that'll play. Um, I think Seattle does a good job of uh, handling Dalvin Cook. And for that reason alone, I'm going with Russell Wilson in the air. So. Yeah. I'm with you. I think it's less than 10 points for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we'll we'll round this week out with Monday Night Football, Justin Herbert versus Drew Brees. Um, Saints are starting to put it together, finally. Um, lost two in a row to the Raiders and the Packers. Uh, turned it around last week. I guess the Lions, I think uh, they keep that momentum going this week. I don't see Justin Herbert outperforming. Um Drew Brees, and then after this, yep. they play the Panthers, the the Bears. They play Tom Brady again, which is good. They get them out of the way early, and then they go Falcons twice to end the season, Eagles, uh, Panthers again, and against the Broncos. So Saints could very easily finish, finish this year 12-4, and 11-5, 13-3 maybe. Um, but, yeah, I think the Falcons – or the sorry, the Saints get back on track this week and uh, continue their heart streak over the Chargers. Yeah, um, I'm with you. I think, uh, especially when uh, Austin Eckler for the Chargers, I think it's going to be a struggling night in the backfield, especially running the ball, which New Orleans is not really a team to uh, give up a lot of numbers to running backs. But no Austin Eckler, I think that hurts Chargers D. But uh, I think I think it'll be a good one. I think it'll stay close the remainder of the game. 
Um, I think New Orleans pulls away late. And not to mention, we might see Michael Thomas back this week. I hope so for Drew Brees' sake. And uh, I like New Orleans in this one. I think that's going to be a good game. I'm excited about it. Yeah, this week could be the return of Garoppolo, Adams, um, Michael Thomas. Uh, a lot of people could come back this week. AJ Terrell's back. Um, it could be big for the for the injuries. Um, yeah, I think we I think we disagreed on two games. Uh, I think you picked the Jaguars and I picked uh, who else was it? Denver and New England. Yeah, Denver and New England. So two good games to watch out for. Um, be interesting to see how this week pans out. Um, but nonetheless, uh, do you happen to know what like your picks are on the season, like your record? Uh, well, I had added it up the other day and forgot to save save it in the uh, Microsoft format or whatever. Yeah. My paper. So no, I do not have it. I tagged it in my other uh, recent notes page and didn't update it. Just gotcha. logged on out. So, but I'll get that added up and let you know. Yeah, get that. We can start keeping up with that. I'm. Uh, I sent you that sheet that we were talking about earlier today. Um, I'm 45 and 17 and one on the season. Uh, and so, something I've noticed is like a lot of the games that I've lost. Um, are games that I kind of started and said, all right, this game could go either way, ex- except for the first game of the season, which was the Cardinals beat the 49ers. Um, mm-hmm. And then again with the Eagles in Washington. I didn't expect that one to go as it did. Um, but, yeah, so other than that, I mean, I, I feel pretty confident in my picks all year. Uh, I'm assuming that we've seen eye-to-eye on a lot of games. The Patriots-Broncos, we could see that going either way. Um Texans, Jaguars, don't really know what you're going to get in that one. So I, I'm glad we find some differences, but I'm also glad we kind of see eye to eye on a lot of things. Um, mm-hmm. Well, that'll, re- that'll wrap up week five coverage for the NFL and a week four recap. Anything you want to touch on before we get out of here? I uh, just want to say, yeah, hey, if you guys have any questions, if you're listening, have any questions, especially relating to uh, fantasy, be sure to uh, ask us. Um, We'll do the research and make sure we give you the best answer possible rather than just giving you back something just because you asked. Um, we'll make sure we research it, give you the most accurate response, and also, Gage, I'm sure you'll touch on it one more time before we close. Uh, we're going to have some shirts and possible, possibly hoodies coming out soon, so you guys be sure to check that out if you're enjoying what you hear. And uh, if there's anything we can do better, uh, let us know. Yeah, definitely. If there's anything you want to see from us, let us know. If you have uh, need any more advice um, on why we picked who we picked to win, uh, we'd love to go more in depth for you. Um, you know, some games, some games we don't really touch on as much in depth. Some games we do. Uh, for instance, the we'll say Saints Chargers, uh, two games that we saw kind of going either way, uh, or not going either way. Sorry, we don't spend as much time uh, going in depth on, but we're we're happy to help you guys out, whether it be fantasy or bets or just who you want to pick in general. Um, say you're in like a little a pool with a group of friends and you want to have the most accurate picks this week or whatever, we'll be glad to help you out. Um, as as he said, if there's anything you want to see from us, just let us know. Uh, we will be sure to include that. And apparel is coming soon. Uh, we will announce the first uh, college football shirt tomorrow, um, and then we have a couple college uh, team-specific shirts coming out. We have a shirt that is the Point After Podcast only coming out, and then eventually we will get to some NFL stuff once um, we get some ideas rolling on what we want to put out for that. So uh, if any of that interests you, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you know when videos go live. I uh, don't want you to miss anything NFL or college related. We got some high school Alabama football coming uh, pretty soon with a couple interviews. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Just be sure to follow us on all social media for uh, interactive tweets such as polls as, uh, regarding games this week, uh, who to start, whose performance you've, uh, you've enjoyed things of that nature so uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in uh, we would not be doing this if it wasn't for you guys um, but yeah so if there's nothing else then we will see you guys next week